Here's a short video that shows you how to import orders from an Excel file. The process starts by creating a data map, and a data map is purely a definition of columns that appear in your spreadsheet. So go to Setup, Data slash Import, and then Import Orders. Click to add a new data map. On the left hand side, you can see all the required columns. So we've got order reference, which needs to be unique for every order you import, the customer email address, which is used to identify which customer the order is going to be for, and then item information. Most of the time, however, you're going to be importing orders for contacts that don't yet exist in Brightpile, so you need a lot more information. And here's a data map with a lot more columns added. The order reference is the one that you're importing from a separate system, so perhaps your e-commerce order ID, the date and time that the customer placed the order, and then the customer email address. If the imported email matches a contact in Brightpile, then that customer is used for the order. If no contact in Brightpile matches the email, a new one is created, using all the address information in the file. If the email address matches a supplier or a vendor, a purchase order will be created. If you want to import purchase orders, put them into a separate import file from your sales orders. So all these customer columns are needed when creating a new contact record. If you're going to be importing orders for customers that already exist in Brightpile, then make sure you've also got the delivery columns, and that'll make sure that the imported order has got the most up-to-date delivery data. The customer record is not updated, it's only the order that takes the delivery information. Each product on the order should have a separate line in the import file, with the item quantity, the item name, the SKU, and either the net and tax amount, or the gross amount and the tax code if you're using VAT mode. If a single order contains multiple products, make sure that each line has the same order reference. If you provide a SKU that exists in Brightpearl, then the relevant product will be added to the order. If there's no SKU on your line item, or no SKU in Brightpearl matches, then a free text line is added. The price you import is the price that goes on the order, regardless of what price might already be in Brightpearl for that item. So to put all of this in context, here's a spreadsheet we're going to import. The first column is the order reference, and you can see we've actually got three orders here. Here's a single line order, an order with two lines, and then a third order with another unique ID. The date time needs to be in this format, in other words, year, month, day, and then hour, minutes, and seconds. The customer email, and you can see for an order with multiple lines, you can actually duplicate the customer data on both lines, that's fine. The customer name, company, and then other customer information, and then if we go across to the right hand side a bit, you can see we've got delivery columns, and the delivery country, as well as the customer country, need to match exactly what you have in Brightpearl for that country name. And then at the end of the spreadsheet, we've got the item details. So the item quantity, the item name, and this is what goes onto the sales order. It doesn't matter what the product is called in Brightpearl. The item SKU, the net price and the tax amount. And as I've mentioned, if you're selling to retail in a VAT country, it's better to import the gross amount, including tax, and specify a tax code, such as T20 or T9. We're going to import this file, and these SKUs do exist in Brightpearl, so those orders will contain the actual products. Here's a SKU for a non-stock tracked item, which is shipping, and I'll show you how that works later. And then finally, here's a SKU that's not in Brightpearl, and we'll see this item added as a miscellaneous line. From your data map listing screen, click to import. And whilst you're getting used to this system, we always recommend you import without ticking the top box, because then it'll just be a test run. However, I know this file is going to import, so I'm going to tick import. It's useful to be emailed a report, and it's generally also worth skipping orders that you've already imported. Choose an order status for your new sales, find your file, and click import. It needs to be an XLS file rather than XLSX. Once the import is complete, you'll get a green message and perhaps some yellow messages as well. So for the first line, the customer James Borwin was not found in Brightpearl. There was no matching email address, so we've created a new contact from the import. The second order was for an email address that did exist in Brightpearl, so that was just created for the existing contact. And then the last and third order, again a new contact was created. All SKUs were found, apart from that SKU on the last line, where a miscellaneous line item has been added. So let's go to Customers, Recently Added, where I can see Paul and James have been imported from the file. From the recent sales list, I can see three new orders for James, Jean-Claude and Paul. 
The currency of the imported order is the currency set on the customer, so make sure that all the numbers you import in your file don't have any currency symbols. Let's drop into this one, where we can see the SKU has matched an item in Bright Pearl and the relevant products been added, and again a shipping SKU has been found too. The benefit of using a non-stop tracked item for shipping is that the text you give the product in your spreadsheet is imported as the description here. If you wanted to, you could also assign certain nominal codes or account codes to that product, so every line item added for shipping was given the right accounting code. If we take a look at a sales order where the SKU did not match, you'll see that just a miscellaneous line item has been brought in here, and it's not stock tracked. Because I didn't import a tax code, it's been assigned not rated, but BrightPull is respecting the tax amount that you've imported. And because the tax you've imported is not what BrightPull would calculate as the tax value, this is what we call manual tax, and the tax box is in yellow. Now many of your imported orders will already have been paid for, so what we do to handle that is create a sales receipt at the same time as we import the orders. So from the data map screen, you can add the payment amount, the payment date, any payment reference, and the nominal code or the bank account into which the payment has been made. This will create an accounting transaction for every order imported that's marked as paid. Now you can't delete orders that have got accounting transactions against them, you'd have to zero off that transaction. So make sure you're comfortable with the order import process before you import lots of orders with payments against them. If you use the payment is deferred field, that will mark the order as a provisional payment and it won't actually create a sales receipt. To find those orders, click show filter on the sales list and choose yes under payment to release and then choose the orders you want to release payment for and then for more actions choose release payment. Select your bank account and then when you release the payment the sales receipt will be created. Importing orders is quite a complex process and you need to make sure you've got the file exactly right so make sure you have a good look through the documentation on our website that gives you all the information you need. One final tip for you is start small so import one order just to see how it works and then maybe 10, and then up to a maximum of 100 order lines per file. Have fun!